my wife and I were looking for a used car on Facebook Marketplace, and actually found one we were really interested in. It was honestly a really good deal, and as soon as we saw it, we texted the seller saying we were interested. The seller seemed perfectly normal over text, and we agreed to meet in a public mall parking lot. He said he wouldn't be available until he got off work at 5, so we agreed to do the transaction at 5.30. Come 5.30, and we arrive at the mall telling the seller what car we were in, just to get a text saying he was running late. We weren't in any hurry, and we figured he'd only be like 30 minutes or so. We both agreed it'd be a good idea to go into the mall and get some food at the food court while we waited. A good two hours went by, both of us pretty impatient at this point. That's when we got a text saying the guy would be at the mall soon. This was in late fall, so it was already getting dark, and we were starting to worry that the mall wouldn't be as busy soon. A little bit later, the guy texted us saying we should meet him at another location, about 30 minutes away in a rougher area of the city. I looked up the address, and found it was a gas station right off the interstate. What caught my eye was the hours. It wasn't one of those 24-hour gas stations, and they were actually already closed. My wife mentioned how many red flags the whole situation was giving off, but honestly, all I was thinking about was the car and how good of a deal we had found. So we ignored them. We sent over a text saying we'd be there in 30 minutes, and pulled out of the mall parking lot, making our way to the gas station. When we got there, we pulled into the parking lot, and quickly realized how dead the whole area was. There were only like a few vehicles parked. After about a minute, my wife pointed out the car, and sure enough, there it was, but it looked to be in way worse condition than the original pictures on Facebook Marketplace. The car was in a pretty dark spot in the parking lot, way in the back. I started pulling up to it when I stopped. My wife looked at me confused, but I swear, I could see something. I got out of the car, and that's when my suspicion was confirmed. There was a spike strip right in the middle of the road exactly where I would need to go to pull up next to the car. At that point, I knew something wasn't right. I got back in the car, backed up, and left the way I came. Once I got back home, I reported the whole situation to the cops, though I never even saw anyone. The only evidence I could give was the ad itself. I never knew what came of the whole situation, but the ad was taken down a few days later. I never heard back from the cops, so if they caught anyone or not, I don't know. Either way, this situation has caused me to be a lot more cautious when using services like Facebook Marketplace. I had just moved into a new apartment, and being the broke postgrad I was, I had pretty much nothing except a few boxes of stuff from my parents' house. It was nice to be done with school and have my own place, yeah, but I didn't even have any furniture. Like I said, I was completely broke. So I thought maybe I'd be able to find something at least decent on the free section of Facebook Marketplace. If you've ever searched for furniture on Facebook Marketplace, you know it's not great. Half the couches there are held up with duct tape or something along those lines. I knew I couldn't be picky, but I wanted something that could at least last me until I had enough money to buy a nice one. I'd been scrolling for well over an hour and was probably already a week into the backlogs. I scrolled back to the top and refreshed the page. The second I did, I saw an ad pop up titled, Brand New Couch, Never Used, Free for Pickup. The post wasn't even a minute old, and I knew I had to be quick if I was going to have a chance at getting this thing. The couch was in perfect condition. I quickly typed out a response to the seller, saying I'd be willing to take it off their hands. I got a response not even three minutes later that read, Yeah, the couch is all yours if you can come pick it up tonight. I'm available anytime past 9pm. I was slightly put off by the response. It was currently noon, and this guy wanted me to wait till 9pm to pick it up, way past when the sun would have gone down. But I ignored it, thinking maybe the guy had worked till then or something. So I texted him back saying that was fine, and proceeded to wait. Come 8.30 and I sent over a text to the guy saying I was on my way. I typed in the guy's address and quickly realized the guy lived in the middle of nowhere. Now, I live right next to the Rocky Mountains, so yeah, there aren't that many people nearby but this guy was seriously in the middle of nowhere. My GPS said it would take 45 minutes to get there, so I quickly set off. As I drove, the housing development slowly became less and less frequent. Sure enough, there was an actually decent looking house, but 
there was no other civilization for at least a few miles. Somehow I had service and was able to send out a text telling the guy I was there. Not even 10 seconds later, I got a response simply saying okay. I figured that was this guy's way of telling me he was ready, so I walked up to the front door. I knocked on the door, to which someone responded in a muffled voice. The door's unlocked. Come on in. From the way the voice sounded, it was as if whoever said it was right on the other side of the door. I opened the door and peeked inside before entering. I quickly realized how weird this situation was. The place was pitch black with not a single light on. Now, this was before every cell phone had a flashlight on it, so literally all I could use to help me see was the moonlight shining in from one of the windows. I yelled out a hello, to which I could hear someone responding from a door on my left that was open. I could tell it led to a basement. The voice said, Come on down here. I got the couch ready to be moved. At this point, I was completely on edge. I replied, saying, No, no, that's okay. I gotta go. I turned around, swung open the front door, and started running back to my car. I unlocked it, got in, and proceeded to relock the doors. I gave one last glance at the house before leaving. No one had chased me. Though through one of the windows, I could see the dark outlines of four different men just looking out at my car. I booked it out of there at that point, and drove straight back to my apartment. When I got back, I checked my phone to see I had three new messages from the guy's number. The first one asked why I left, followed by one asking if I still wanted the couch. But the third one is what disturbs me most. It simply read, You're lucky. This is by far the most disturbing experience of my life, and has caused me to never use Facebook Marketplace or anything similar again. To this day, I'm convinced those guys in that house that night never had the intention to sell me a couch. A few weeks ago, I had to fly out to a small town I'd never been to before in order to look for a place to live at for school. I was flying alone, though before the trip, I had researched all sorts of apartments in the area on Facebook Marketplace was actually able to set up a few meetings to look at places. The first meeting was in the late afternoon, in a sort of remote residential area. The landlord sounded fine over email, and asked me to call him an hour before meeting him to confirm I was coming. And so I did just that. I called him an hour before, but he didn't answer. I decided to just start walking to the house, and hope the landlord would show up by the time I got there. About an hour later, the guy called me, he asked me if I was still coming, to which I replied, Yeah, I'm actually only about five minutes away. Though, the guy's reply caught me completely off guard. He replied, furious, saying I wasn't supposed to show up for another hour. I quickly realized he was right. Back then, I had a pretty old phone. It wouldn't automatically change times whenever you switch time zones. I forgot to change it manually, and realized I was showing up an hour early. I explained the situation to the guy over the phone, but I could tell the dude was furious. Now, I get I was in the wrong, but still, getting that mad over something as small as this seemed weird to me. I explained to the guy I'd be willing to just stay outside of the house till the agreed upon time, to which he quickly replied saying no, almost pleading with me. At this point, alarms were going off in my head, but I ignored them as I really needed a place to live. I decided I'd just go get some food at a nearby place to pass the time, until I needed to be at the house for the tour. Once the time came for the tour, I showed up to meet the guy. The guy looked to be in his 50s, and if I'm being honest, he looked disgusting. Some of his clothes were half torn, and it didn't even look like he'd showered for weeks. I didn't feel comfortable, and found myself just wanting to leave. Though, like I said, I really needed to find somewhere to live and there weren't that many choices in terms of real estate at that point, so I decided to stay. As I was discussing the details about the house with the guy, I couldn't help but notice a man leave the house from a back exit. This man was young and extremely sketchy looking, even more so than the guy I was talking to. He took one look at us, ran out of the house to his car, and pulled away. At this point, I was full on disturbed. I asked the guy who that was, which he replied it was another person he was giving a tour to earlier. The guy then proceeded to ask me a lot of questions. They weren't normal questions a landlord would ask, but rather more personal questions like how old I was or what I was going to school for. 
the whole time staring into my eyes without blinking. I tried to give answers that were as vague as possible. Finally, we entered the house. Now, from the outside, the house actually looked decent, but upon entering, you could tell the place wasn't taken good care of. I followed the guy as we walked around the house looking at all the rooms. Every time I would ask about the condition of the house, the guy would avoid the question simply saying it was unfinished. After we finished looking at all the rooms, the guy mentioned he wanted to show me a shed in the backyard of the house. Before I could say anything, the guy told me to follow him as he led me to the back of the house outside away from the street to this sort of detached shed. When we got there, he opened the door and I quickly noticed that there were stairs leading down into utter darkness. He flipped on a switch at the top of the stairs, but no light came on. Normally, the response for this would be surprise or something like that, but he didn't say anything and just started slowly walking down into the utter darkness as if he expected no light to come on. The guy was now just standing there at the bottom of the stairs, in the dark, and said, Aren't you coming down? I said nothing, still in shock that the landlord wanted me to follow him down into this dark basement cut off from the rest of the house. For whatever reason, I glanced back at the house and saw another guy in the backyard doorway. I panicked and ran into the woods. I didn't look back, and honestly I didn't want to. I don't know if they followed me, but after about a half mile of running, I turned around to find no one. I quickly realized the situation I was in. I was in the middle of the forest at sunset, with people possibly chasing me. Though, luckily, my phone had service, and I was able to find my way back to the hotel I was staying at with no other problems. As soon as I got back, I googled the house and did some more research on it. Apparently, the house had been abandoned for three years. I checked the status of the original Facebook Marketplace posts I had responded to, but of course, it was deleted. I debated whether or not to call the cops and report the situation, but decided against it as I figured there wasn't much they could do. I can only imagine the guys I encountered that night were a group of homeless people with some unknown intentions. Whatever the case, the whole situation was extremely disturbing.